Yeah, look at that. I almost made it by 9 o'clock. Okay, it's not even remotely 9 o'clock, woman. Um, <clears throat> it's 9.16 in the morning and live from New Jersey. It's me. How are you guys doing this morning? I hope you're doing well. Um, I have no idea if I'm actually live streaming right now, but um, I just realized I need to start talking as soon as the the thing on the one side says that it went live, because otherwise it's a lot of me going. What? So, um, yeah, so what's going on, guys? How is, uh, how is, um, what the heck? Oh, okay. See, people, people trying to talk to me on Skype, do they not realize I'm live? Hello? Um, so Friday Night Live with Gracie and I went really, really well, you know, at least I think so. You know, I don't know how the rest of the world felt, but we thought it did, and we were really enjoying it. And good morning, Lindsay and Hannah. And, um, so, yeah, we had a really good time, and we totally, uh, want to do that again. I have to talk to Gracie, and we have to decide if we're going to do it again this week, or if we're going to do it every other week. But if we do it every other week, that would mean that our next live stream, we would be, good morning, Alice, that we would be trying to live stream from a hotel because we are going to be at Atlantic City Boardwalk Con in Atlantic City um, that weekend. So I have to talk to Gracie and, you know, we have to figure it out. Okay, I got to charge my phone. Of course, now iTunes wants to open and iPhoto because as soon as you hook up your phone, 87 things like are like, ooh, me, 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 pay attention to me. And you're like, hello, trying to live stream. Leave me alone. So, um, but I was really, really happy. Um, I don't know if any of you attended uh, the um, the live stream that we did uh, over the on Friday, but um, it was cool. It was a good time. Good morning, Angela. Um, so I, I wanted to start with that I have really good news for you guys. Oops, sorry, I hit my monitor. Um, I have really awesome good news. Are you ready for the really awesome good news? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I finally heard uh, from the hospital where they're going to be doing my infusions. Good morning, Dodie. And my infusion dates for round two of Lentrada are scheduled July 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, morning, my super vlogs. So I'm not sure. Uh, maybe if I can figure out how to live stream from the car, maybe I'll live stream as we're driving in for my infusions. Uh, maybe, you know, in the month that I have to figure that out, I can figure that out. Um, but so I was really, really excited about that. I actually kind of oddly enough found out um, we were uh, at the cemetery um, saying goodbye to, uh, hey, hey UK, good afternoon UK. We were uh, saying goodbye to Bill's Uncle Herb, um, our final goodbyes, and I, you know, left my phone in the car because, you know, respect. And, uh, when I came out to the car, I had a, uh, a voicemail from a 212 area code. And I was like, 212, 212, that's the hospital. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then I was like, oh my gosh. You know, like all of a sudden I was like, what, 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 what if it's bad news? You know, like, what if something's wrong? What if my insurance said no or, you know, something? I had one of those like tiny little freak out moments. And, uh, and then I listened to the message and it was just her giving me the dates and instructions to um, show up for my uh my infusions so i'm really psyched about that and yes i am using my monitor to put on my makeup because that's just how we're rolling on these live streams and uh by the way i don't know if i ever told you guys this little thing that i do i actually when i'm doing the concealer i actually put it on my eyelashes and it kind of creates like an eyelash primer just to make your eyelashes thicker kind of thing fyi I started doing that like years ago. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And I feel like, um, although I physically feel like poopy caca, um, I feel like, you know, I'm getting somewhere. So, um, and then I feel like I can start, we can, we, can, we can continue on with the healing and the getting better. 
My MRIs are May 15th, and so sometime, I, I probably won't, they probably won't give me the results until I go um, to see them on May 25th, so that's going to be like a little bit of a nail biter. Um, so there was this article that um, I wanted to share with you guys, um, and uh, let's see, I read it on the Huffington Post. And I'm going to attempt to post the link here so that you guys can see it. Um, but it totally caught my eye because I'm always trying to um, figure out, you know, how to how to live a better life, how to be more fulfilled, and and stuff like that. And I've always been like that. Um, even before MS, and I think that all of that kind of stuff that I did um, prior to getting MS is actually what kind of helped me to um, approach the MS situation a little bit, a little bit more with a little bit more of a positive mental attitude. So this article is called Eight Things Ridiculously Successful People Do Before 8 a.m. So, of course, that caught my eye because I'm on this morning routine kick that I'm trying to get back into a morning routine. So, my alarm went off at 7 today because I'm trying to get myself back to getting up at 7 o'clock because I did that for years once I um, retired. And then, like, over the past year, 7 o'clock became 9, whenever, whatever time. Oh, that's wonderful. There's a thousand legger bug crawling around in my office right now. Spats! Spats, get the thousand later! I'm not going near it. Um, you know, so... No! <laughs> Go away. Go away, bug. Go! Spats, eat the bug! Um, so, uh, so, but now I'm trying to get back to... So I will, you know, I did... Uh, the alarm went off at 7. I didn't get up at 7. And I... My excuse for that was that Sweet Willie was in the shower and I needed to use the bathroom, so I figured I would just wait until he got out of the... No, you were supposed to eat the bug, not play with the box. So I, uh, I didn't exactly get out of bed until like 20 after 7. Um, and then I, uh, but then I did do my stuff. I got up, I exercised, I meditated. Um, I tried not to check email and stuff, but I had, I had something really important going on from a YouTube perspective for Family Video Network. And, um... The people that I deal with on that are in Ireland, and so they Skyped me, and I really needed to see that Skype, so I had to check and arrange that. Now I'm, like, a little nervous because now that, that meeting is not until 2.30 this afternoon, and I'm all like, <laughs> um, trying not to be stressful. But anyway, so I did keep to my routine mostly. So you might be wondering, as was I, what are the eight things that ridiculously successful people do before 8 o'clock in the morning? And I figured I knew, like, you know, they wake up. I knew there had to be exercise in there. And, and, and even before I read the article, I was like, probably meditation and eating breakfast. Now, I've always been a breakfast person. I can't not eat breakfast. So I'm like, I'm always successful at that one. Um, by the way, I'm drinking this because my tea is boiling hot. Okay, so the first thing that was on this Huffington Post article written by... Who is this written by? Does it have a byline? It does not have a byline, I don't think. Let's scroll to the bottom. Don't they let people have bylines on the Huffington Post? Um, Dr. Travis Bradbury. Okay. So the first thing is the thing that I keep saying that I'm going to do that I haven't done, which is drink lemon water. So there's, like, all these articles. I don't know if there's studies or not, but that, like, drinking, like, tea but not tea. You know, make yourself a cup of tea, but instead of putting it in a tea bag, squeeze a lemon in there. And that drinking that first thing in the morning, like, kickstarts your digestion. It's supposed to give you more energy. It's supposed to be good for your body. It's supposed to, like, fix the pH in your body. And supposedly this is a really good thing. And he keeps saying I'm going to do it, but then Sweet Willie keeps not buying me lemons. How am I supposed to make lemonade without lemons? But so, yeah. And it can't be lemonade. It has to be, like, like lemon water as soon as you wake up. It supposedly spikes your energy levels physically and mentally. Um, it's supposed to improve nutrient absorption. Um, you should also wait 15 to 30 minutes after drinking it before eating. 
So just, I thought the same thing. I'm like, well, drink the lemon water because I always drink my green stuff, my green food, my healthy stuff with in a big giant glass of water before I exercise. So I just do the lemon thing. Then exercise. So yay. I felt really good about that. And the other thing was disconnect. And that sort of fell into what I was learning from the habits book and what I did identify in myself as a bad habit of checking my email and my Facebook and all my social media and my YouTube stats before I even got out of bed, right? Which I am not doing anymore. I've been a good girl. I did, though, check them before this live stream, which I'm trying to delay it like until like nine o'clock, but um, so, but it talks about, so um, like there's this one, um, one person that they talk about in this article um, who, uh, da, 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 who is this guy? Who is this guy? Howard Schultz. Uh, so he's the CEO of Starbucks. So what he does is he sends out a motivational email first thing in the morning into his employee, to his employees and then he shuts everything off and then he exercises and does all his stuff. I think for most of us who don't own Starbucks that um, we probably don't need to do that, you know, and they don't, I, I, I have, I have Laura, Laura, I could send you a motivational email first thing in the morning, but I think Laura would send me back snarky <laughs> email if I sent her a motivational email at seven o'clock in the morning. So, um, mm. but the disconnecting is definitely, see, that's another thing that successful people do. So. We're, 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 we're doing, I'm doing it right, right? Are you doing it with me? Are you like trying to like, are you trying to be like cool about this with me? Um, no, I have not listened to Lemonade by Beyonce. I, that's like a whole thing. Like if I need like an hour, right? Hey, Kristen Connors is back. Lots of folks are back. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, so no, I, I, I got to check out the Beyonce thing, I guess. By the way, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going back to the mini because I really, really, really enjoyed the mini shadows. Um, so, so I'm like, okay, so I got those two things I'm doing, right? And uh, eat a healthy breakfast, which I do after I exercise and after I meditate. They have it flipped. They're like, eat a healthy breakfast and then practice mindfulness. I find it hard to practice, you know, to meditate once I've eaten. It's just hard. Um, I don't know. Because then my stomach is, oh, look, I put a pen in with my makeup. Uh, I don't know. Then my stomach just starts making noises and, like, stuff, and it all confuses me. And so so I, I meditate, which I did do today. I only did 10 minutes. Um, I did a very simple 10-minute um, mindfulness. Oh, yeah, and I wanted to show you guys this stuff. But I have to find my phone first. So, um... These I really, really dig. Um, let's see, how can I show you this? Okay, so um, there's these meditations that are um, sound meditations, and um, they're called, uh, there you go, uh, Solfeggio. It's S O L F E G G I O. And Glenn Harold, if you look it up on iTunes, um, they're his production. They're like $9.99 each. And of course, it tells you that they're based on an ancient solfeggio scale. But what what they are is they are um, sonic meditation. So um, they use the power of sound sound frequencies, and different sound frequencies um, correspond to different um, different things going on in your body. So, um, what exactly is meditating? Uh, meditating can be anything from um, focused prayer to having nothing whatsoever to do with religion where um, you can meditate by just um, sitting quietly and just listening to the sounds around you. Um, the best way to start meditating is to just sit somewhere quietly. I lie down because I can't sit up for that long and just focus on your breathing and um, it's, it's relaxing but it also helps to improve your focus and your of your mind and um, it just gives you like more control over your mind and your emotions and stuff like that I need the menopause fan so um, yeah I can another on another 
I'll make a video about meditating because it's kind of a bigger, longer conversation than that. But anyway, so, you know, practicing mindfulness or meditation or prayer, if that's something that's important to you, that's what a lot of, you know, that's one of those eight things that ridiculously successful people do. Good morning, Gracie. Gracie has a, a plethora of bunnies this morning. Yes, all the bunnies. Um, and by that, I mean stuffed bunnies like Jenny, Juliet, and Gigalina from the gang, not, you know, actual bunnies. So I was like, look at that. I, except for that lemon water, I'm on, I'm on a good, uh, I'm on a good, good roll here. And then the other one was set goals for the day. Now I do use an app to like have a to-do list and then I try and prioritize my to-do list. And, um, but lately my to-do list has been kicking my butt every day. So, um, this leads into the, uh, last thing or no, not last thing, but I don't even know what the number we're up to make certain your goals are realistic. So, um, it says a good rule of thumb is to make your day as top heavy as possible. Uh, think about things that have the ability to advance your career and schedule them first. When you complete difficult tasks first, you carry positive energy and a feeling of accomplishment into the rest of the day. So I think that that's very, very, very important. And I think that I have not been doing that as well as I could. So um, today when I sit down to make my, to look over my to-do list and decide what order I need to tackle things in, I need to um, do that. So I'm gonna try, it's, it's slightly, slightly bluish in color, this color over here. Um, and I don't have my glasses, so I can't even begin to tell you what it says. I think it says Daisy's My BFF. So I'm gonna try that as a lid color. I know it's super light and it's probably a highlighting color, but I just wanna sort of get them all over base. So that's what I'm, uh, I need to figure out today, you know, what are, what are the mountains that need to be climbed today, sort of, and then climb those mountains first. Um, and, uh, I think some of those are like annoying, like businessy and like insurance paperworky type things, which is annoying. Um, so, uh, I need to do that. Um, Alice, oh, I just checked my email and I have a job interview. Congratulations, Alice. That's awesome. That's really cool. Good luck. Yay. I hope it's for something that you really want. You'll have to come back and let us know how it goes. Um, another thing that they recommend um, in this article is to say, oh, now we're going to use this one over here, um, to say no. Um, and I have had to learn because of the stupid MS, how to say no to more things. Um, unfortunately, I have to say no to a lot of things that I actually want to do, but um, I think everybody, especially people who, who work, um, some, pe some of us say yes way too much. We're always like, oh yes, let me help. Oh yes, I'll do that. Oh yes. Or someone comes up to you and says, hey, can you give me a hand with, and your, your, your knee-jerk reaction is to say yes, because of course you want to help, right? But then we get ourselves in a situation where we've now overcommitted um, ourselves somehow. And um, now I'm going to use this one. See, I'm afraid, I'm still afraid to use the blues. Oh, I think I'm going to use the brown in my crease today. Whoops, you can't even see what I'm pointing at. I'm going to use uh, that one. Going for something basic today. Uh, yeah, so I think, um, you know, learning to say no, I've always heard that as a, a success technique, which sounds crazy, but it's knowing what to say no to. I mean, there are things in life you have to say no to and things in life you have to say yes to in order to be successful. And uh, people who are successful manage to figure out which which are the good no's and which are the bad no's. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. But I was always, I would always get myself like overstressed in any kind of work situation because I would, I would agree or say yes to doing too many things or being on too many projects or helping too many people. And then I would be all stressed out because I'd be like, I can't possibly do all this. I gotta get all my job done. So, yeah. 
Um, so that's a good one to learn. Okay, wait, I'm just putting some of that brown shadow along my lash line to meet up with this little doodad I got going on over here. Um, so that is some really good uh, advice, I think, I think for all of us. Um, and I am working on that. I've had to learn how to ask for help, obviously, since I became sick, but I, it's, I've actually um, even more so had to do that. I've had to ask I've had to even ask people help us with our YouTube channel, and like that's like weird because it's our channel. I have trouble kind of doing that. Um, so let's see. No is an answer to you. Were so right, Dodie. I like that. Um, what do I think about drag queens? Wow, that just came out of nowhere. Um, I think that you know. First of all, I think they do makeup way better than I do. I think they're awesome. I think if it's something that makes them happy and fulfilled and and, and if it brings somebody joy, um yeah, go for it. You know? Live your live your life. Live your live your life however you want to live your life. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, I got no problems with it. Um, there we go. I'm trying to blend this all now. I'm trying to blend, blend. Blend. Okay, there I blended. See, I blended. Um, so uh, then the the last thing in this this you know eight things that all of these awesomely successful people do is then bringing it all together. So developing a successful morning routine is essential. So here we are. We're working on our morning routine, right? How old am I? I am forty eight. So maybe 49 in December. Um, and I have to admit, I'm getting a little freaked out that um, that next year I turn 50. And I never thought that was going to bother me. But I suddenly started thinking about things that, you know, well, I, like, I'm definitely thinking about it as a hill that I'm going to be over. And, you know, that if you don't, I'm starting to think like, well, if I don't do it by the time I'm 50, I might as well. It's never going to happen. Like, if I don't um, get my body um, into a shape that I'm more comfortable with because um, I'm just like a little rounder in the, in the belly. I never used to be round in the belly. I was always like big in, big in the booty and that never bothered me. But now I'm round in the belly too. 50 is the new 40. That means I have another 10 years to grow up. <laughs> I think that's what freaks me out. Like, do my, am I like, am I gonna have to actually be a grown up? Like, I don't know where that, I don't even know what that comes from. Stats, what are you doing? He's knocking something over. Uh, did you know that Jubilee year is 50? Yeah, oh, I get to start over again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 I have lots of time, but you know, your body does things. So I'm not so much worried about, like, obviously I'm still going to play with toys. We have a box that came from Tokidoki that's upstairs that I so desperately want to open. I think my tea's ready to drink. 30. 30 was awesome. 30's like, you're an official grown-up, but you're still young. Mmm. The tea is drinkable now. Yay. Um, this is our uh, 20th anniversary of the Food and Wine Festival. Disney mug, in case you're wondering why you should not have a Disney mug. Mm. Yeah, so like the box came from Tokidoki, and I was like, squee! Because they emailed us and out of nowhere, and because I've tried to contact them before, and they were like, oh, you're 10, hey little Miss Greasy. Um, and then all of a sudden, somebody contacted us, and they're like, oh, we saw you opening the BFFs and Mufias, you know, would you... Would, you know, would you be interested in opening some of our new products on your channel? And I was like, oh, yeah! So, um, do I know ways to help not getting bug bites? Other than using the, the no bug bite spray, I do not know of any, uh, any all natural ways to do that. I wish I did. Mm. Oh, caffeine. So are you getting a lot of bug bites, Minecraft gamer? See, the, the mosquitoes haven't come out yet here because we keep getting the cold. Um... Oh, yes, that Tokidoki Coolip doll that Chad Allen got. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my, I don't know if, uh, if any of you were on uh, Friday night during the live stream. People kept asking us to call Chad. And um, 
He did that to me once. I mean, he did like a Periscope or a live stream or something. He called me. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't want to just like call him. So, um, cause we usually like we text, we don't really like call, you know, you call if there's an emergency. So I texted him and he was gaming. <sighs> What's that about? Sorry, I'm drinking. Mm. Gracie gets bitten to death. Um, well, not literally. That was obviously an oversell. But yeah, um, bugs love Gracie. And um, Gracie does not like mosquito bites. And then last year, she kind of got lucky. And she was like, you know, I hardly got any mosquito bites this year. And I was like, hey, yeah, that's right. But then I realized, hey, how about that? I totally forgot you guys were in there. And I just, like, moved the lid. Um they, uh, lavender, oh, and it, and it, lavender perfume, huh? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? It's not little. Little Miss Gracie, let me tell you something. If Graveyard Girl said hello to me, you would hear me screaming all over the world. I am such a fangirl. So, the fact that you're a fangirl of, like, ours is just, it still, like, messes up my brain that people feel like that about us. But I do understand, like, what that feels like. Like, I would just, I'm so, I'm embarrassing when I meet people that I, um, that I really, really like. So, uh, Ripsy Pixie. Mm. Oh, lavender oil. Okay. Oh, we'll have to try that this summer. I love the smell of lavender. I always wondered, because, like, um, what do you call it to keep, um, what are those horrible, nasty-smelling geraniums keep, um, to keep, like, deer don't eat geraniums? So I was wondering if geraniums would in any way ward off, like, if you just, like, rub geranium all over you. Of course, you would smell nasty. Uh, what are the dolls doing in the background? Well, Nephra's kind of hanging out. Uh, Collector Draculaura fell down, uh, Draculaura down, so she needs to get herself back up. This is Boo York Nephra, and so that's why original Nephra came downstairs when we did that review. Um, yeah, and so these dolls have been here since we reviewed them when this, when we were using this temporarily as the studio. So Draculaura down, and yeah, that's the one problem with that Collector Draculaura, she's a little... Um, her stand is not very good, and so she, it tips, and so she tends to fall down, so, yeah, they parted too hard last night. They must have been at Uncle Herb's funeral with us. Oh. I drank wine in the middle of the afternoon. That was not a good idea. I came home, and I fell asleep for, like, four hours, and then Gracie texted us, and she was, and Daddy fell asleep, too, and Gracie texted us to be like, we gonna eat anything anytime soon? And it was like seven thirty at night. I'm like, oh my gosh, so sorry. I need to feed the child. Um, had to start a new mascara because my mascara. Are these live every day? Um, they. That's the goal, unless I have to be somewhere, in the morning, um, like if I have a doctor's appointment or something like that. Um, Monday through Friday, the goal, is to, um, put on my makeup while chatting with you guys and uh, sort of sharing. I don't know what I'm sharing. I honestly don't know. Um, what is my favorite Monster High doll? So, yes, Gulia is my favorite character. Gulia is also my favorite sculpt. And my favorite Gulia, I have two favorite Gulias. I have um, Scooter Gulia who whose hair though is getting funky and um the uh my other favorite and this is kind of a people in the world is um is dot dead gulia because she's got the um the like super curly hair like super duper curly hair and they really have never gulia always kind of ended up with the same hairdo and so I feel like she got, like, she really, for Dot Dead, they really, like, got her gussied up, you know. Um, 
I have seen that the new budget dolls with the rebooted faces have hit stores. Um, and I am trying to remain calm and tell myself that these are the budget dolls. Um, oh, Windex? Okay, I might have to try that. Um, yeah, because she's got the plastic saran here. Um, I'm trying to stay calm because this is these are the budget ones. We have yet to see the, um, you know, the full on, you know, comes with a stand. These are the $9.99. I'm trying to stay calm, but I have to admit, I'm really freaked out. <laughs> so, having said all that, I'm so freaked out right now by what these um, budget dolls look like. Like, I'm afraid to go to the store, even though I do want to go to the store. Um, but it's really crummy out today, so that might not happen today. Um, I know we haven't gone doll hunting in a while. I haven't been feeling well, so I, I haven't really been able to. But um, I did want to. Do I have a least favorite Monster High character? Hmm. A least favorite character. Uh... Like a, like a continuing character, like a, that's hard. Um, kind of like all, like, the main characters. So, um, and as, like, obnoxious as Twirlai is, um, but she's supposed to be. So she's, like, fulfilling her destiny by being like that. Do you know what a My Life doll is? Yeah, those are the dolls um, at Walmart, I believe. And they're made by Madame Alexander. We do not have any yet, but I do want to try one. And you know who loves um, My Life dolls? I will give you a linky link. Um, let me find this thing for you. Um, and she just got some really cool, uh, she just got a really cool, um, I think it's the desk set. Elvira at the Doll Circle is a huge... She's like now obsessed with the My Life dolls. So here, I'm going to give you, there you go. There's a link to that. Um, it should pop up in the chat. Uh, so uh, do you watch, uh, no, I do not know that person. I do not. not now, they made by Unita now. Hmm. I'm totally lost right now. I lost, I lost. Oh, they're not made by, by Madame Alexander anymore? Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Um, they used to be. Yeah. They're cute. I don't have any. Really? Madame Alexander pulled out of the contract? Well, Madame Alexander's going through a lot of financial stuff and reorganization, so that does not surprise me. Um, there we go. See? I got my blush on. A little bit of highlighter. Undertale or FNAF? Um, I think they're so different that uh, I would really... I would, I would, I would have a hard time, um, from what I know. I don't know what Gracie would say. That would be interesting. I feel like she would say the same thing, though, like, that they're so different, but, you know. Hey, love AG shoes. Oh, I love American Girl shoes, too. Who's my favorite Ever After High character? Raven. Totally Raven. But I love Cerise, too. But I love Raven, and I think it was it was absolutely hysterical um, um, in Dragon Games when Raven's mom came and we got to hang out with Raven's mom. I thought that was really funny. Uh, are Torlai and Cleo Denial way too nice? I think that what happened is, sorry, I'm looking for like something to put on my lips. I think what happened there was was that um, originally. Both Cleo and, oh, cool, ooh, 1950 doll from Nan Alexander. I think what happened with Cleo and Torlai, if, if you guys are old enough or, or if you started watching the very early webisodes, Cleo was a horrible person. <laughs> she, was, she was not nice. Um, she used to treat, like, Gulia like a slave, and she was not nice. And Torlai. Um, was meaner than she is. And I think probably um, 
you know, Mattel got some backlash about that. And that's why they toned down the bullying uh, and stuff. Because um, Cleo was not a good friend and um, most of the time. And she was very nasty. But then my favorite... My absolute all-time favorite Monster High webisode is the one where um, Gulia wants to go to the con, like, you know, whatever her con is, um, and uh, she wants this, like, autographed, dead fast comic, and I think it's a contest or something. I don't remember the exact... Sorry. Talking and doing lip liner. Um, I don't remember the exact, oh wow, I totally messed that up. And, uh, so, but what happens is, is that, um, Cleo gets her minions, who are her slaves, uh, and, um, she gets her slaves, which we don't mention that there's, um, yeah, there is, I, oh, I have tons of different stands, I just have to do it for the Dracula. She gets her minions, her slaves, which they never, uh, you know, really mention that again. <laughs> and, uh, they all, I don't know, they all enter the contest. They all stand online. I don't remember. It was, it's been a couple years since I watched it. And, um, she ends up getting the, the comic for her friend, Coolia. And I think that that was the first time that I was like, oh, Cleo has a heart. And I think since then, They've, you know, continued to try to, I need a haircut. They've continued to, to continue to try to humanize Cleo Denial. All right. Spritzing my finishing spray. Oh, that feels good. There we go. <laughs> Just inhaled it. <laughs> that doesn't taste very good. So now I have to make my list of things that I have to do today. And I have to prioritize my list of things that I have to do today. And then I have to actually do them. Um, so, uh, yeah, that all has to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Gracie, Gracie and I got to do some schoolage. So, thank you all. Oh, I'm not going to die. Just inhale the nasty stuff. Thank you so much, um, for coming and hanging out with me today while I put on my makeup. Um, yeah, that article about the eight things that ridiculously successful people do was pretty cool. And, um, I feel like I'm doing a few of them. So that's pretty cool. Hey, Spats. Spats, did you eat the bug yet? Yeah, there was meow bug. I told you there was meow bug. You just ignored me. Wow. Yes, Monster High has a lot of movies. And then the webisodes are just totally off. Um, uh, will I be here tomorrow? Yes, I do not. Let me look at my calendar. I do not believe that I have anywhere to be first thing in the morning. I try not to do that. Um... Yesterday, of course, we had the funeral, so I didn't really have a choice. Um, yes, I will be here. I will be here the rest of the week, every day, sometime between 9 and 10. So thank you all. Thank you all, everybody who returned. For those of you who was the first time, I hope I will see you tomorrow. Sometime between 9 and 10, I go live. It just depends on how fast I can make my tea and get dressed. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!